Who's the most powerful super in the superpowered universe? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to another episode of Dro Talks. Dro here. Today we're going to be reviewing who is the super to rule them all. It's a huge world for those of you that haven't listened to Superpowers, uh, year one through four, and the standalone version that ties in as well nicely. Corpies. There will be spoilers, so if you haven't listened to that, don't watch this video. I have plenty of reviews. I'll put a, cl- a link below to the playlist to where you can get all the superpowered action. Look at that, because here we're going to be uh, discussing these characters in detail, and to do some of that, we will need to spoil some stuff. So this list is based upon my perspective only. Your list might differ. And I would like to hear what your list looks like in the comments down below. So we're going to be using the strategy that Nick Campbell developed in year two. Spoilers, as I mentioned, you've been warned. And we're going to rank them based on the card system, the a deck of cards. Who's our, who's our ace, who's our king, who's our queen, who's our jack, so on. So without further ado, let's start knocking these superheroes together. And, well, not just superheroes, these supers. Because I I included the villains in this as well. So let's see how they rank up. So we have of all the characters and superpowers. We got 41 of them. I did not include everyone. Especially from the Corpus universe. Our peers team with the exception of Hexlint. Because a lot of them are underpowered. And by no means are are, would compete. Also I took out a lot of characters that I had very little info in. And I actually ended up repeating that process as, as we got closer to the round of elimination. I want to talk a little bit about how I decided to try to make this a fair competition between our beloved characters. And what I did is I created some categories. Uh, intelligence, damage classification, uh, the system that we were introduced to in uh, Corpies. Then expanded upon in book three, year three and four. Close combat skill, long range skill, damage resistance, cunning, and fortitude. I weighed each one appropriately. 10, 10, 8, 8, 6, 4, 4. I came up with those weights based upon my own personal impressions of how these factors seem to change the tide of battles during the the many fights that took place. So this is a, a way to try to make it as fair as possible. As you can see, for an example, in intelligence, a 1 would be your average person, me. Or a 5 would be a genius, Albert Einstein. Somewhere around that level. Damage classification that was given to us by Mr. Drew Hayes. So we got our NTC, not non-threatening uh, character. Combatant, non-threatening combatant. Standard class, demolition class, Manhattan and Armageddon. And then we got our close combat skills, average street tough, MMA special forces, and then like Kung Fu master level. Same thing with long, long range, brawler, no, no, uh, no range tactics involved. Handgun, rifle, sniper, and then something from a God's Eye type level. Uh, something that a sniper couldn't even contest with. And then we got cunning, honest Abe, a poker player, politician, spy, and faceless man from Game of Thrones. And and fortitude, we got average, willing to go the extra mile, triathlon athlete, never quits, and then just plain unstoppable. And then, based again upon my own perspective, I weighed all these, multiplied them by where they stood, and we came up with the score based upon what they got. So when you look at just the score, here's where everyone kind of falls out. We have Globe and Titan tied at the very beginning, with Mr. Transport here, following shallow, shallow we at the end when i did this exercise i had this list in my mind on how everything would fall and i was actually very surprised on how some of the characters fell some of the characters fell where i figured they would fall such as globe and titan being very strong but some of the characters surprised me such as relentless steel and even mr transport but this is where we started here's our 41 characters as you can see so we're going to use a deck of cards to go through this list and we're going to try to make this as quick as possible that way we can have plenty of time to discuss this in the in the comment section 
But without further ado, at number one, we have Nick Campbell. He has a total score of 166, which really makes Nick Campbell uh, a competitor amongst uh, his uh, his comrades here and, and our, our villains that we have on this list as well. It's not necessarily about how powerful he is. It's more about how intelligent and cunning he is. Nick, time and time again, proves that it ain't no outsmarting him. He is almost as if Batman were to go rogue, which we have seen in the comic books, uh, where Batman, as you know, a uh, prepared Batman can take down anyone, and the same can be true for Nick. So that's how he outpassed a lot of the individuals on our list. So he is our number one. Now let's go to our number two. At a total score of 150, Violet Sullivan makes our number two list, even though she actually ranks lower than Nick. Her power has the potential to be very devastating as she can fly in the air and manipulate her and whatever she holds matter and density. And uh, what does that mean? She can actually make herself become similar to an uh, asteroid or a meteor hitting the earth. So she has the potential to be an Armageddon level type super for that reason. Even though some of the other scores bring her down, she is definitely above Nick Campbell in this scenario. So with that said, let's check out who made number three. At number three comes in none other than our, one of my favorite professors, and that's the seamstress. The seamstress is very strong, and she proved her ability when she went up against Vince, Roy, and Mary, and they beat her by a hair's breadth. She has proven that her ability to man manipulate the cloth that wraps around her body can be strong enough to withstand even the greatest blows from Roy. And her tactical ability, close combat fighting, and her ability to maneuver several weapons at the same time with very little effort makes her extremely dangerous. In our number four position is none other than Alice Adair. Her ability to manipulate gravity is intense even though her overall score is at 156 which is below some of our other competitors her ability to hold people within there and i'll give you an example if she were to fight the seamstress she could easily apply a force of gravity around the seamstress basically eliminating her ability to fight and now alice has shown that she can apply a, a gravity field to an entire skyscraper so yeah Number four. And at number five is none other than Shane DeSoto. Shane's ability to manipulate shadows, even the shadows cast by another individual very far away, creating, making him the perfect killing machine. And he can manipulate a lot of shadows at the very same time with surgical precision. Shane is definitely one of the most dangerous characters out there. And I'm happy to have him on this list at number five. And at number six, none other than Chad Taylor. Always one step ahead of Shane, and Shane knows this, and Chad knows this. Chad is strong. You know, he has complete control of his body to a, mon a molecular level, and he can do, he can even manipulate his body to become offensive, more aggressive, and he can even overclock his brain to compete with that of a speedster. He's stronger. Um, in certain senses than most strongmen and he's as receptive as speedsters but what really makes Chad dangerous is his ability to be flexible and versatile he can basically morph himself for any situation making him one of the most deadly and fierce competitors in the supers universe and you know he was the king for a very long time throughout our uh, us going through the story so yeah number six at number seven is none other than angela de soto she is the exact opposite of shane she manipulates light as opposed to shadows the reason that she ranks higher than shane is for two main reasons the first reason is her ability to manipulate light into armor something that shane at least did not show within the stories so that gives her a defensive edge. But the other thing, and probably the more important factor, is she's ruthless. Where Shane practiced 
surgical precision so he could be less deadly with what should be the most deadly skill on the planet. Angela did no such thing. She goes for the kill. And that makes her very, very dangerous. Add to that her ability to think on her feet. She defeated Chad in year two. And that's no small feat. Because Chad was pretty much undefeatable at that point in time. And that hadn't been the first time she defeated him. And probably was not the last. So yeah. At number eight is Professor Fletcher. Um, He took down the entire... uh, uh, junior class I think that's enough said he has the ability to actually transform his body into electricity and at the same point in time he's one heck of a close combat fighter at 168 the score proves that he has what it takes to be one dangerous competitor now at number nine we have Will Murray Will Murray how how could Will Murray be above Professor Fletcher. I mean, Professor Fletcher actually pretty much destroyed Will Murray along with the rest of the senior class. Well, I'm making an assumption here. I'm making an assumption that Will Murray created all his gear, all his tech within a box. Limited resources, limited tools, and more importantly, uh, guidelines. He couldn't be lethal and mostly he had to look for alternative measures and with that he created gadgets able to to stump uh even the son of titan roy so yeah put will murray with unlit with unlimited access to unlimited resources and i think you got yourself one of the most fearsome competitors in the superpowers universe And he has shown that he's not afraid to cross that line, which makes him even more dangerous. Now at number 10, this one really surprised me. Relentless Steel, Coach George. So why did Coach George come up here? Well, as I was ranking him up, Coach George is really a very strong competitor. He's a shifter that turns into some sort of cyborg that can fly with rocket fuel. He has laser beams. He's in. Com- he's completely strong, battle tested, battle hardened. He pretty much pounced Vince and beat up countless others, and he hacked uh, a pretty much unhackable system. It took him a long time, but he did it. So by no means should Coach George be uh, trifled with. And I think it's fair to say, although he was damaged and hurt throughout the series. He was never taken down. And there's something to say about that. And at number 11, Vince Reynolds. I just finished saying how Coach George pummeled Vince Reynolds. But Vince is very, very adaptive. His power is absorption. Uh, With that energy, he seems to have no limit, which makes him an Armageddon level uh, super if he were to absorb the right power. And... There seems nothing nothing stops this this kid. Uh, his moral compass is one of his most limiting factors where he will look for the save as opposed to the kill. But that's why we love Vince. And that's why we want him. But Vince by no means can be taken down easily. Every challenge that was presented to him, he overcame. And I foresee that going forward in the future uh, revisions of supers that Drew Hayes releases. I think we're going to see a little bit more of Jack of All. At number 12, who can top Vince? Well, what about the man who trained him, Globe? Globe basically controls everything when within a sphere around him. So he has complete control. That makes Globe very dangerous. And we saw it at the end of book four, spoilers, you had been warned, where no one could take him down. There were supers, villains, heroes, everyone against globe and although he was weakened he did not get taken down he has pretty much every power his only limiting factor is the reach of his sphere and certain supers which is one of the reasons i really love this universe because it really is like a glorified rock paper scissors so zero could more than likely actually um, defeat globe fairly easily because he nullifies all superpowers but with that said, Globe is a beast. 
and the only the only thing preventing him from taking the top spot is his moral compass cuz he will also look for the save rather than the kill same as his son Vince and at 13 we have none other than Titan we've gotten glimpses of Titan he had his own book and then he played a pretty strong role in year 4 but Titan is one of my favorite characters if not my favorite character and what makes titan awesome well he's a strong man but his power is actually adaption so you can get him once but that trick will not work twice and this is why even though you can see him and globe are at the same par i would say that titan would have the edge because again globe would try not to kill titan and that would be the downfall of globe because all those tricks would work one time. And if you don't kill Titan, then it's over. Titan would destroy Globe. Because he is basically unstoppable. Now Roy, I think, actually has... Well, Roy and, and Herschel. I think they have the ability to surpass Titan. But at this point in time, and even where Book 4 left us with its prologue, I just don't think they're there yet. And uh, a lot of these other individuals that made the list are definitely a lot more powerful. So, Titan is our king, Globe is our queen, Vince is our jack, which is very fitting, and I did not tie that in. That was actually just the way the cards fell, pun definitely intended. Relentless Steel is our 10, and then here we go on down, all the way ending with Nick Campbell. But anyone who's ever played cards knows that an ace is not just a 1, but it is also... A 14 it trumps everything and I think that is very fitting for Nick Campbell because of all the supers in superpowers the one individual that is most fierce the one individual that would always come out on top is Nick Campbell because Nick is a genius level cunning version of Batman with luck on his side so Nick, he absolutely would find Titan's um, a weakness, which Titan has a weakness, and, and he, he did share it with us in Corpies. And he probably don't share that with anyone, but there's a good chance that Nick already knows it or would know it if he needed to. Same thing for Globe, Vince, Relentless Steel, Will, or Professor Fletcher. You just can't really get one across Nick. So Nick, hands down, is the most powerful super in the super-powered universe. At least up until this point. And here's how that breakdown looks in a nice pretty little graph. And there you have it. Nick is our most powerful uh, of the powerful. So that's my list. What's your list? What do you think about it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Who did I not put on here that should be on here? Did I leave someone out of the complete list and rankings? I did take a couple people out, and when there were ties, such as Titan and Globe, I used information from the story, such as I explained with Titan and Globe. Globe would try to spare Titan. Titan would adapt to whatever tricks Globe could throw at him, and at the end of the day, Titan would triumph. There was a lot of ties, and I had to use that type of rationality to solve them, but overall, I was surprised. Some of the characters fell exactly where I thought they would fall. Uh, some of them were very surprising. I did not expect Simtress to be up here. I did not expect uh, Relentless Steel to be up here. And I didn't expect Will Murray to be as high as he was. Um, Nick Campbell. The more I thought about it, the more sense it made. But that's just me. So I look forward to hearing what you think. So... Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, a lot of work and effort went into this video. So please hit that like, hit that subscribe, ring that bell to get notified. It'll definitely be appreciated. I had to reread uh, several of the books or at least uh, uh, summarize uh, through most of them. I re-listened to several key chapters. I went through the wiki sites, the fan sites, everything to try to bring out the best list possible. And I hope you all enjoyed it. So... Who's your favorite super from Super Powers? Let me know, because that's going to be my next video where I share who's my favorite super and why. 
with that said i still have a competition going uh, make sure you comment and you like one of my videos once i get to 113 subscribers i will be giving away six audible credits from my wallet to your ears so make sure you get in on that and you will be one of the lucky few to get your own audiobook. We'll see you next time.